Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Rez. I'm a designer here at Adafruit. And joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Rez, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for all you lovely makers out there. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Welcome to episode 213. Is it 13 or 14? 214. Wow. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We got some stuff for you guys. Let's start off with today's coupon code. It's Grinch. So if you got anything uh, to pick up before the deadlines, they're approaching very, very fast, if not already here. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, use a coupon code Grinch, get 10% off your order. This works on everything in the Adafruit shop except for gift certificates and subscriptions. We have some free stuff for you. If you go to, head on over to the website, adafruit.com slash free, you can see we got some new freebies going on. So I'm going to run through them. For $99 or more, you get free Permaproto half-size breadboard. That's this guy over here. For orders that are $149, this is the new one, or more, you get the Permaproto half-size breadboard and a free PCB coaster. You, can, uh, you may get one of Minerva, Hans, Cappy, or the LED Trio. The coaster section is random per order, and we can't change which one you get. So that's pretty neat. I, have to, I happen to have one right here. I use this thing every single day. These are a lovely, beautiful design. Um, it's a collab venture with uh, uh, Beatport, the, of some folks from, not Beatport, is it Beatport? Port, something, Boldport. Yes. Boldport. Super awesome artwork. And this is a, a Ninja Flex bumper that we made for a couple of months ago. We need to release it soon. We're not done yet. Uh, orders that are $200 or more, you free UPS ground. Orders that are two hundred and ninety-nine or more, you get all of that plus uh, free Circuit Playground Express. You get the shipping, you get the co PCB coaster, and the Promo Proto. All that good stuff. So get, head on over to afree.com/free if you want more details on that. Okay, holidays. There's a, a dedicated spot on the Adafruit website, afree.com/holiday. Mm -hmm. This one gives you all the dates and all the holidays that uh, the team is not will not be shipping, and these are all the tiers. Uh, all the shipping deadlines for 2018. So I think the last time to order is probably the fourth, the 17th. If you do next day delivery UPS, you can still get it before the 25th, which is a special day here in the States. So very neat and, and other places too. So there you go. There's, there's all the dates and stuff you need. Let's see what else we have. I think that's it for housekeeping. Um, Circuit Python meeting happens every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time on the Discord server. So, so server, yeah. So if you want to join in on that, sit in and listen to the devs and other folks from the community talk about Circuit Python. Check it out. It's at uh, the Discord. We have a Discord server. It's at uh, discord.gg/adafruit is the invite link, so you guys can join if you aren't already. Great place to get project help, share your projects, that sort of stuff. We're hanging out in there right now in the, I was in the 3D printing chat room. I'm going to head on over to the live broadcast chat room say what's up everybody. What's up? Hello. Okay, so uh, we got some daily stuff. Daily newsletter is the thing I was referring to. Daily newsletter dot, da adafruitdaily.com is the newsletter. You got to opt into that one. We don't spam anybody, so you have to, you have to do that one. We have another one once a week. It's called the News News Newsletter. This has new products, so you can check that out. If you com slash newsletter. Help wanted. That's right, jobs.adafruit.com. Jobs.adafruit.com is the site. Check it out. There's some new job offerings out there. So if you are a maker with skills and you need to pay your bills and you want to do some cool projects, 
for cool companies, cool maker companies, check out jobs at adafruit.com. There are some really cool ones. So check them out. I won't go through with them all because there's just more and more and there's more pages. So if you don't have a, a, a profile, go ahead and make a profile. It is free to do so. And we appreciate you for uh, checking it out. Okay, so that was the help wanted. We did the Discord, we did the newsletters. Same day delivery is an option in New York City. So if you're in New York and you want stuff from Adafruit, like right away, that's an option for you folks. And that brings us back to the show. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. live in front of all of you folks. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to quick shout out to everybody in the chat rooms. Hello. Got all the usuals hanging out. We got Kirby, hey, we got uh, Ganesh, Charles, yeah. Berna Ford, Ardwana, Matamale. Yanni's in the house. Hello, Yanni. And then over on the Discord, which we're hanging out in the live broadcast channel, we've got uh, Andy Calloway, Hello. Madable, Hello, Madable, TG, I think. Uh, Matambale. Thank you all for hanging out with us this week's project. Mm -hmm. Jump right into it. Of course, for the holidays coming up, the popular thing to do is make a faux fireplace. So much faux. <laughs> or fake fireplace. Yeah, it's pretty faux. Constructed pretty out of cardboard, so we're back into the cardboard slash three printing projects for this week. It's a uh, motorized Grinch fireplace. So of course we have a Circuit Playground Express driving some NeoPixels and a motorized Grinch. Uh, took the switch apart here so you can just show the action of it. I'm just touching two wires here. And when that happens, it's supposed to be on a switch when you step on it. He hides away when you try to go up and grab him. Come here, Grinch. Ah. <laughs> there he goes. So everything is constructed with the uh, alligator clips, so there's no soldering required for this whole project. Everything's running off of one circuit, Playground Express, using these um, switches that we made out of cardboard with tin foil attached. So when they press together, it'll make contact and activate the servo. We'll go ahead and jump into the learning guide for this. Take a look at the construction of this. Yeah, so if you head on over to learn.edifer.com, you can see all the projects. This week's 3D Hangout project is there. It's live, so you can check it out. Nice little rundown explanation of it. So, uh, Brandy, uh, my wife, made this. Uh, it's become sort of a tradition now. I think this is like the second year where we've built one completely out of uh, cardboard. Wanted to make a little twist on it for this year, so we added, of course, the Grinch, motorized it, and added the LEDs. Yeah, there's a lot you can do to it, too. Um, we were kind of briefly saying in the video, but uh, it's a lot of different little crafting parts of it. You can split it up. You have your fa you know, your family or your, your team kind of build this thing. I think it'd yeah. be a cool school project, too. Um, uh, and just the scale of it, it's like you can build this kind of giant thing uh, and move and push things around with simple servos and a, and a battery pack, as mm -hmm. long as you keep the weight down. Um, but constructing it was pretty neat because um, it's it's really nice this time around. Um, the first time we made it, like it was caving in because it didn't have like these little ribs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of great tutorials out there on how to construct the fireplace itself, uh, which we linked to, and we were we kind of got inspired from uh, a couple of the folks, crafty folks that uh, that have uh, crafty YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, one of the big eye openers for us was constructing it out of the foam board. We're using a 30 by 20 inch long, uh, those big old pieces of foam board. Yeah, you get those at the dollar store for a dollar. Yeah. Um, this was painted with a really nice texture. Uh, masking tape was, was aligned out here to create this kind of grout texture. Uh, so a lot of different things. Uh, this right here is just, what do you call it? Uh, vinyl that you stick vinyl? on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like that cheap, again, a dollar store material. Uh, it has a sticky back, and you just stick it on there. Lining is a drawer lining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's super lightweight. Yeah, so we can take a look at, at the, the back, back of this guy here. You, you can, can see all the charm in the back there. <laughs> so the bottom foam. here is nice, and, and it's got like these ribs and stuff to kind of keep the weight, mm -hmm. uh, or at least make it so that it doesn't just kind of collapse. Some through. nice structural integrity to it. Yeah, a lot of hot glue. wings and uh, ribs. Yeah, a lot of hot glue and stuff. 
lots of hot glue. And then of course, on the inside of all our electronics, you can sort of see it here. You have the Circuit Playground Inside. Express yeah. hiding it in the back there. Mm -hmm. We are using the Make Do 3D printed compatible screws that you designed That's right. a couple months ago. We never figured out what project to release this on. So we have an assortment of adapters and screws and fasteners. Nuts and bolts and Nuts and bolts, yeah. <laughs> servo mounts, CPX mounts, feather yes. mounts. So there's a lot of 3D printed attachments that you can add to all of your cardboard projects. Yep. Continuing on into the learning guide, you can take a look at the very simple uh, assortment of electronics you're going to need for building this little guy. As we mentioned before, the circuit playing on Express, a high torque metal gear uh, servo, although you should be able to get away with a uh, non-metal geared one. And our lovely NeoPixel strip with the built-in alligator clips. So this just clips onto those lovely pads on the Circuit Playground Express. Um, you could also get the make dos. We do have these make dos. So if you don't know about these, these are basically little fasteners for construction or for uh, board, cardboard. Uh, they come in a little bag. Very, very nice. It has a little tool for poking holes and stuff. Um, but we 3D printed them as well. So we made some that are that kind of work with these mm -hmm. and uh, replacement for them. If you run out of them, you can just 3D print some if you have access to a 3D printer. This is good stuff. Um, definitely good to have maybe a stocking stuffer for the little ones or, or anyone mm -hmm. really because you can you never know when you're going to need to yeah. make some cardboard pro uh, prototypes. And this yeah. is the fastest way to do that. Yeah. And you were saying before. Uh, the screws, you can use the ones that come with that kit, or you can make even smaller ones customized for what That's you're right. building. It's actually what I had to do here. I made them just oh, a little yeah. printed yours so mm. they were uh, okay. smaller, uh, so I didn't have yep. to thicken up a lot of the standoffs that we built there onto there. Another hero of the show are the small alligator clip to male jumper wires. You click on These those. Guys are awesome. We need these because they are plugging directly into the servo and then right. we're hooking these up onto the Circuit Playground Express as shown in this photo here. That's right. So also good for breadboarding because it's a standard 0.01 inch header. Mm -hmm. Perfect for so classrooms. Yeah. Definitely grab a couple packs of these. Yeah, 12 in a pack here. And then of course you could use female to female jumper cables to add oh, those as extensions. Yeah, or just these regular alligator clips. These longer ones are used for the uh, extending the button the switch. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the switch. Yeah, these are nice, nice assortment of colors. Definitely and great. And have some copper foil tape if you don't want to cut thin strips to build the switches. You make little traces. There you go. With, with the these tape. thin six millimeter by fifteen meter roll of the copper mm -hmm. tape has some conductive stickiness on the other side for this, um, so it'll conduct yeah, really right. nice Got for cap touch. Cool ideas using the copper tape and all in the learning guides below the product page. So there you go, that's all the, most of the parts that uh, you need to build something like this. Let's take a quick look at the circuit diagram, pretty straightforward. We got some alligator clips connecting to these uh, aluminum foil pads. They can be as big or as small as you want. The NeoPixel strip hooks into ground, voltage, and a data pin on the Circuit Playground Express. Same thing with the servo, uh, although it's not a data pin, it's an analog pin. I meant to say digital pin. So there you go, there's a nice little reference for you guys. And then uh, for accessibility purposes, we've broken everything out here as well. Mm -hmm. so there we go. And when it comes to powering it, there's many different options for powering it. We opted in for the AAA battery pack. It's easy to swap those in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to worry about puncturing the battery. Um, and we like to use the rechargeable four, uh, four AA packs because they give you a little bit more voltage and because, you know, it's, it's rechargeable double A's. And because um, of the strip you here, you want the, yeah. uh, the lighting to last longer if you just want the uh, lights to be going on. There you go. Cool. Moving on to the code we're using at Microsoft's Make Code to add all the interactivity for the light animations, for the fire. Of course, when you touch the, or when the contacts which uh, pieces are touched, it will activate the servo. You said it. There you Do go. Do a little rundown on how to set up your uh, Circuit Playground Express to use Make Code. Super easy. Just download the UF2 file that they provide for you. You click on the code there, or the .uf2, if you want to just drag and drop that on there. Mm -hmm. If you want to modify some of the code, change the color of the animation, or the animation itself, or the behavior of the servo, you scroll down, it can show you how to set up 
web USB using a Chrome browser, which allows you to just hook up your Secret Playground and send code directly to it without having to drag and drop anything. Yay. Super easy to do cool. and set up. You have links there if you want to edit the make code, change around some of the colors and values for customizing it. If you want to make a different themed fireplace or this would have been excellent for uh, Halloween. Yeah, like a sort of a jump scare thing. Mm -hmm. You would trigger when you step on it. So there you go. Uh, yep, make code. You have two is downloadable, or you can modify the code in another window here, which will give you the interactive uh, code blocks that we used. There you go. Super helpful for modifying code in a classroom setting. You don't have to install anything. Mm -hmm. It just works right with your browser. There you go. Moving on to the 3D printing portion of this, all of our mounts, of course, you can just hot glue them down, but we want to be able to change these out, switch them out for different components or e easily debug them. Uh, we have a servo mount here and the uh, Circuit Player and Express mount. We also have a feather mount as well on we the Thingiverse page. I didn't list it here, but it is as part of the um, downloads. Yeah, the goal was to just make a whole bunch of cardboard mounts for the components, various mm -hmm. components. So now we get a chance to release them on a project where it makes sense. So there we go. Yeah, STLs so and the source files are there. If anyone wants to modify it, it has some CAD skills, you can totally update it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you guys want to speak of design stuff, all of our parts are on GitHub. All the different uh, circuit playground boards, feathers, servos. If you want any of those components to use in your CAD package, you can use our models for free. They're up there on GitHub. Links are right there. Also in the description of the video. When it comes to slice settings, we have our, our set of slice settings that we use using Cura on our Ultimakers. But uh, for the majority of printers that are FDM based, uh, the slice settings are going to be about the same. A little bit different here and there, but uh, standard settings, no support material required, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Is there anything? Tolerances should work out pretty good. It they should have a nice work tight pretty fit good. Mm -hmm. with uh, your standard uh, micro servo sized servos. Um, I think that's about it, really. The only other thing mm -hmm. is the, you do have the ability to modify the little mounts there for the uh, servo. So you can go inside of Fusion and delete any of the sides for, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. for fitting into different fit. areas. Yeah. There's just a press fit. There's a little, little cutaway for the cable to pass through. Mm -hmm. And those two giant circles there to allow the fasteners, the uh, make-do fasteners to attach to whatever cardboard surface you got. If you see the Grinch, he's actually, he's not even glued onto the servo arm. He's, he's, he's like a paper clipped <laughs> to mm -hmm. his cardboard. Because um, you can move him around, reposition him if you want to. It was primarily so we could change out the theme for that. And then mm -hmm. one last thing for the CPX mounts. If you scroll up, you can see where the standoffs are for that. If for whatever reason you have to use the pins that those, um, where the screws go on top of that, you can change where the standoffs are in, in relation can, to it. Yeah. So you can rotate those around, yep. and have those being rotate on, the a, around. on a different pad if mm -hmm. you do need those alligator clips to go over uh, yeah. where those standoff screws will go. Yeah, you do need some screws. Um, we might need to note that, but uh, you do oh, need some screws, yeah. M3 style, that's the size. We also have a bolt kit for the Circuit Playground Express, so you can use those screws um, or any type of screws that you, that you might have laying around. Hopefully they fit. Um, so M3, also uh, for the Imperial side of things, it's 440s. So any of those type of screws should work, M3s and 440s. Assembly, how do I make this fireplace? So the <laughs> biggest inspiration for this was the recent post from HGTV's Handmade. Uh, Karen Kraft showed, or Kravitz showed yeah. a, a really handy way to construct this. Yeah, Although she's using a link. TV, um, an old TV box uh, we opted for using what the crafted lumberjacks to use, which was the foam board, and then it combined that with the structural uh, build out that they made. You should yeah, be able to here's see a it cool right here. look of uh, how these guys made it. There's a little bit w more in depth. There's definitely more structural stuff to it. Super cool, uh, big scale fireplace. Very handy way on creating those ribs and adding structural integrity to the, fire is so the cardboard fireplace. I really like the top there that they had. Uh, mm -hmm. Ran out of time. Definitely wanted to make that. Maybe we'll do it for next year. Yeah. 
They went with the uh, sort of wallpaper route where they just kind of stuck that on there. Which is not Brandy a good idea. Yeah, Brand Brandy actually painted it in, which gives it more texture to it. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll fix this video. I think it's just something here, but. Uh, uh, moving on yeah, to the. There it is. Up yeah, this is a truck. really thorough video of how to kind of assemble this this thing. And some things to look out for, tips and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of the good tips are in creating the little arcway, so you have a nice geometrically uh, centered, symmetric uh, yeah. arc and all that cool stuff. Cool. Some of the other things we're going to need are, of course, just scraps of cardboard along with 3D printed parts, and that's what it's going to be mounting onto since you are going to be limited in terms of the space available to get your hand in there and really add everything. We are attaching the mounts to scraps of the cardboard, which will then be glued on the inside. Makes it a little bit more easier in terms of working with adding your alligator clips and your battery and all that stuff in there. So that's why we're doing this. We're creating our standoffs off of a couple of different squared parts. And that's just to elevate the mount so you could stick a battery underneath or have the wires running underneath. And go in like a little thorough explanation of sort of quote unquote tapping your cardboard screws in there to make it easier to uh, fasten with the little tools there. Using high temperature uh, uh, glue gun to adhere everything together. That works out really good for the cardboard. You scroll down the way that this is attached you can see the final build there on just attaching the circuit playground mount onto the cardboard cool we went on to the servo arm it's actually attached just to a long arm that's again constructed out of cardboard it's going to swing around uh, you just want to make sure that you have ample room uh, for pivoting so you want to make sure that the location and the orientation of all the components give it enough room for when it goes up you want to make sure there's enough room on the top and when it swings down you want to make sure that there's enough room on the sides so it doesn't run into any of those walls and then the other thing too is the depth so you want to make sure that you have enough um, that it's like sort of in the middle so it's not running into the uh, walls on the front and the back yep and that's why we have to make those uh, standoffs to push it out a little bit further out. Uh, let's see the servo arm. Yeah, we're just attaching the included horns that come with the uh, metal uh, servo. It comes with like three or four of those with the hardware screws included with that. And we're just simply just tapping those into the cardboard arm. And then to create the uh, the base that uh, that's, um, the servo mount's going to attach to, we're going to trace out some little templates of where the holes for the servo mounts are going to go. We're just using a pen or whatever, and then the sharp tool that actually comes with the Make Do Toolkit. We just use those to uh, sort of pre-tap those, puncture those through, and attach the servo mount. And you can scroll down there to see what the assembly of that looks like. It's just the cardboard. Attached to the servo horn with the arm, and on the, on the end, we have our little themed Grinch. Which we totally skipped over, but we did just create this out of uh, cutouts. You can just search for uh, on Google for SVG uh, Grinch. Obviously, we can't provide those for copyright reasons, so definitely uh, search around. There should be a lot of really good ones, even two, uh, 3D printed ones on Thingiverse if you just want to do a silhouette of it. Mm -hmm constructing the switch for this super easy it's just two pieces of cardboard the trick uh, for these um, was to add like a slight bend on the top here you can kind of see where the bend for this is and that's only and that's just so that it is use my hand to show how it's bent it's bent like a like a little teepee or something on the top so you have ample gap so that it's not always touching. And then we have these little pillars on each side so that it gives it a little bit of rise to it. So when you um, touch it, like a slight little touch of pressure will activate the servo. Of course, this isn't gonna work if you have like a very heavy rug. We're just using like a super light um, furry rug mm -hmm. uh, for our purposes. So this worked out very well. Simply just one layer of the cardboard cardboard on the corners 
and then the tin foil right in the center with a little uh, cardboard trace uh, that's going up to the edge and that's where we're connecting the alligator clips and when you combine those it makes a super easy uh, switch yeah you can make it as big as small as you want mm -hmm. um, it's, you could use foam inside uh, in between this the cardboard so yeah, that uh, if it lasts longer or maybe the carpet's heavier mm -hmm. we actually link to another guide on the uh, on the site uh, yeah, the Dan, the DDR uh, switch. A dance pad. Yeah. Here we go. Here's another way to do it. Got some. Uh, let's some use foam. a slightly bigger aluminum foil pad. Mm -hmm. um, but same concept, cardboard, um, and then uh, this material. You can you make, make it, like a sandwich here. Yeah, you can see how that's uh, put together. Yeah. And that's it. Copper tape too. Yeah. So different ways to do it. Looks like you use coroplast instead of cardboard. A little mm -hmm. bit stronger. And different ways to do it. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. if you need more of, uh, like, if you, if you need more weight on it, if you don't need it to be as sensitive. This worked out really well with, um, you know, the, just the, how we were using it. Mm -hmm. and as you can see from the video, it did do a very good job in terms of uh, the sensitivity of it. Scrolling down, that's pretty much it. Testing your switch having your layouts and orientation, make sure you have ample room. And then finally is the setting up of the scene and then the cardboard uh, logs that are just made out of like cardboard tubes. Uh, of course you could Pipped take- tubes. Uh, no, it's just those long tubes. Oh, wrapping paper what came tubes? Out. Yeah, Probably exactly. Probably wrapping paper. Mm -hmm. Cool, or you could use the, the toilet paper ones. Those are already cut Chamber for you, small. Well as, uh, um, work well. These are all glued together, so that's just you know one, uh, so they're not going to flop and fall all over the place. Right. Yeah, you want to do that. Yeah, we're stringing the NeoPixel strip through these to create that uh, nice little glow. And then the other tip was cutting in some shapes to make it appear like the wood has like some glowing ambers that are dying out. I'm trying to sneeze. Now it's gone. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. It's coming. And that's pretty much it. A super easy to build Never came. fake fireplace. Motorized. Faux. Themable. It's so much faux. Mm -hmm. So faux y. It's a very cool. Easy. Yeah, this is fun. We're going to do one again next year. Add more stuff and make add a cricket, mm -hmm. more motors, sound effects, some speakers. Definitely got to do a version with uh, missing, sound effects missing or. Lights here. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a, supposed to be a quick project, um, mm -hmm. but as most quick projects are, they take time. Yeah. Um, just constructing the thing itself. Definitely helpful to have help, um, you know, to have your, your, your family help out with this. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a lot of different little... Yeah, one of the other different things that we that added near the end after we had filmed everything was just a little... Uh, yeah, you need a way to turn it off. Easily. Button on the front there yeah. for the... Uh, it's the yeah, JST it's to on and off uh, button. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, super easy to do. Get all the files on uh, Thingiverse. And yeah. of course, all so the instructions on Learn. It'd be no fun to buy this pre-made, because you can. <laughs> Believe it or not, they have I think cardboard. they do sell them. No, they do on Amazon. We're looking at them. We're like, hey, I'm trying to get tag ideas, mm -hmm. titles, and things. But uh, cool. There you go. That's this week's crafty, seasonal-themed project. Yeah, the project. seasonal-themed project. Very cozy. So check out the learn guide. If you want to pick up anything at for Shop, please use coupon code Grinch. Yeah. More words on the Grinch. Um, we used a, a pre cut, vinyl cutter, cut them out of some green cardstock. Um, we have a learn guide on how to use a vinyl cutter and how to create graphics for doing sort of a layered graphic where like oh, it has right, different yeah. colors and things so mm -hmm. it'd be worth talking about that um if we just type in cree cut in the learn guides i think it would show up we have a couple of cree cut type projects there it is yeah so uh how to make these awesome characters is a, is a great uh great tutorial techniques on how to make these really colorful vibrant looking characters so uh these are one of our Favorite projects, it uses uh, the Cut machine to create a lot of different graphics and things. Combine this with 3D printing, 
get down on some vector artwork. We also have a layer by layer on how to create the vector artwork to create that multi-layered look like we were mm -hmm. talking about. It also covers some uh, tips for doing multi-layered uh, right. uh, iron-on shirts as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we, we have our characters here um, as well. So you can imagine have Blinka come out of the thing. That'd be it's a good idea. Cool. But we wanted Grinch because he's, he's such a great, iconic character. Um, he stole Christmas. Who, who doesn't like someone who steals Christmas? <laughs> Super cool. So there's some learn guides and... Um, Definitely worth mentioning yeah. to check those out. I'm going to link those in the guide as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll get down down there. Very cool. So head on over to learn.adafruit.com. See all the awesome guides that are uh, up there right now. It's loading, so just give it a second. Um, so yeah, got a lot of great projects this week, and we're getting closer to the new year. Another awesome year. Actually, Again, already working code. on the uh, review video. <laughs> yeah, it is actually next week's thing. Yeah, I killed the site or something. Is our uh, stream still working? Yeah, I okay. see no complaints. Cool. <coughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we're going to move on to what are we prototyping as we get closer to the new year. This is going to be our last project for this year. It's a pretty fun one. Here's the thing. What are you prototyping? Yeah. So working on a uh, this guy here. So this is a sort of a lamp. It's a New Year's Eve ball drop. So what happens uh, every single year at Times Square in New York City? A giant 12 foot in diameter geodesic ball drops from Times Square, um, cel you know, celebrating the new year. So Lamar thought it would be a fun idea to actually make a small desktop version. It's not really that small, it's kind of big. So here it is. Um, it's got a piece of aluminum extrusion. This is a 2020 uh, aluminum extrusion. And uh, on the top of it is this really nice 3D printed uh, geodesic dome on the inside of the dome. It's actually uh, held together with magnets. On the inside of the dome are NeoPixels. So you can kind of see here that there is a NeoPixel um, strip core on the inside. This is completely hollow. The, uh, there are neodymium magnets on the tabs here. And on the inside is this really kind of elaborate track where there are precision ball bearings and 3D printed mounts and brackets that allow this um, this dome to kind of move up and down uh, this this track here. Well, we're kind of making it. It's a slotted aluminum extrusion, so we are using those slots as little ways to kind of create this uh, this kind of track. So we got some new pixel strips that are wrapped around in there. This is dual extruded. These domes are dual extruded using uh, transparent PLA and black PLA, and then we have those neodymium magnets on the inside there that allow this to kind of sit together. Now on the top of it, it's kind of hard to see it, but on the top here we have another ball bearing which acts as an idler. And that allows it to do that. There's a piece of yo-yo string that is wrapped around this bottom, let's look at the bottom base. So the bottom base is where all the electronics are. We have a tripler feather wing here. So we have an M4 feather, RTC precision, uh, real-time clock, right? So this, what's going to happen is that at the stroke of midnight, this thing's going to know that it's midnight and it's going to play back some audio and make some animations and turn this here uh, servo. So this is your regular standard servo. It's the continuous rotation type. Uh, we have a 3D printed wheel here where it has tension on this yo-yo uh, string. That moves down. As you can see, there's a long cable here. This is one of those silicone cables. Uh, it has the, the three wires for the voltage, data, and ground. I, uh, we're, uh, Dave Estelles is going to help out coding this so that we can get this thing to actually do stuff. We also have some stuff here mounted. This is a speaker. This is the 40 diameter. It's a 3 watt, 4 ohm speaker. And a button for probably testing and things so we can uh, test it out. Um, I'm right now, I'm just kind of winding it up because I don't have any code for... Uh, winding this up yet. We were playing around with uh, the Circuit Playground and, and doing some make code stuff, but uh, had to switch over to the Feather as it is going to do some it's pretty advanced stuff. And then uh, countdown with the RTC there. Exactly. Countdown with the RTC. Um, so that's what we have so far. This, this uh, base here uses um, a couple different hardware pieces. We've got some standoffs. We've got some, uh, some lock nuts. 
And this is uh, a really good way to do the construction of everything this. Everything is basically you can get in the shop, including the standoffs, the aluminum extrusion. Um, it's under our CNC category. So this is a really nice, the 2020 is really nice um, stuff to work with. John Park actually used it to create a pinball, iPad pinball frame. Mm -hmm. I used it to, uh, to create my slider. Uh, yeah. And now we're using it to create this really cool um, New Year's Eve ball. So let's watch it again. <laughs> Woo, happy New Year! Do we don't have an end stop or anything on it either, so... Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I talked about the skate ball bearings. There's a lot going on here, and mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a guide. We're going to try to get it out before the end of the year. It's getting pretty close, so that's uh, what we're going to work on. So we got to make the guide. Huge shout to Dave for helping out on the code for this. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it needs some pyrotechnics, says uh, oh Kirby. Gosh, of course it does. <laughs> we still have a bunch of fireworks left over, we so do. that'll definitely be in the video. Okay, we'll have it outside or something. Uh, so outside of being a New Year's Eve ball, I think you can you could throw in here uh, some internet connectivity, maybe an ESP eighty two. Maybe when you get a text message or you get an email from somebody special. It'll go up. Maybe you make a sale on your Etsy store and this thing lights up and mm -hmm. moves up and down. Yeah, it should be Maybe a nice Maybe it role. lets people know that you're doing a live show and it goes up and goes red. There are a lot of different yeah, things yeah. you can do with something like this. It's a, more or less a lamp, but uh, with the ability to kind of go up and down this track, I think it's kind of neat. So you have the servo and of course all those new pixels make really nice lighting effects and animations. Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, should fit on most 3D printer beds that are like 200 millimeters cubed. I try to stay within the 180 millimeters because that's how big the diameter is for this ball. Uh, the real ball in New York City is uh, it's 12 feet. So this is a one to 20 scale version of it, <laughs> um, which is pretty nice. It's nice reading about the history of it. It's been going on since 1907 to 1908. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's, that's when it got inaugurated. Um, pretty sweet, yeah. It's exactly what we were thinking uh, as a desk accessory at work, yes. says Kirby, so he knows when it's time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> right, it just tells you to go home. Like, and of course you have audio, so you can say fun things. So very festive projects uh, this this year. Of course, we're written in CircuitPython. Yes, it so will be. It, it is be actually, easy. it's running the CircuitPython NeoPixel demo, so mm -hmm. it's just kind of doing the color wipe. That's it. I really like these magnets. I was like, how am I going to attach this thing? Magnets, they're so the best. Cool. How they work, how do they work? So there we go, that's what we're prototyping. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know. I'll be in Discord. John K is asking, are those micro racks for the beam? What are you, huh? What's that mean? Micro rack. Can you elaborate? Which project are we talking about? Yes. This one. 80-20 stuff, what is that? Oh, it's the lumen extrusion. Oh, the lumen extrusion, yeah. So uh, if you just type in uh, slotted, uh, it's, it's, it's right there. It's at 600, yeah, it's 20 by 20, 610 millimeters long. Um, we have this as a CAD file, if anyone wants to download it and use it. We also have a drawing here that shows you all the little slots. And we have some hardware that accompanies it, so if you want to mount things to other things using it, I really like this stuff. You can make hinges, you can um, you can add brackets to it, use it as a framing. I actually use it as a hatch holder, so I mounted it to my wall, and uh, all these T-nuts and oval nuts are really good if you want to attach something to it, which is mm -hmm. I am using that, so I was able to attach some ball bearings uh, to these guys in here. So it's on a nice track. Um, it's it's kind of neat. Like you you wouldn't be able to see it unless uh, unless you take off the core where the neo pixels are wrapped around mm -hmm. to illuminate it. And, definitely um, handy for debugging, getting in there, yeah, switching things around. Definitely, it's yeah. So that's the next step is uh, <laughs> documenting how to assemble the thing. Yeah, Mattable is saying that this looks like an erector set for an adult. It could be, yeah, totally. Yeah. Any aluminum. Very versatile. Stuff? Yeah. Again, it, makes, it made a good framing for a pinball, for an iPad pinball from John Park. And uh, yeah, it's just good. It's lightweight material. Yeah, I was about to say, I yeah. love how lightweight it is. It's aluminum. One of the other one that you were going to try using. Yeah, um, had, we have this slider here. 
This is a different version of thing it. This thing so is heavy. It's, it's raw steel, so very heavy. <laughs> uh, this one, I was actually trying to use this, this one, one here too, the linear oh. linear bearing one. Yeah, it's uh, it's freaking heavy. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I went with the aluminum extrusion route. Yeah, so there you go. Some cool, cool so we're stuff. Awesome. Hopefully, we'll have it in two weeks, something like that, right before the new year. It'll be like on New Year. Huh? Let me look at the calendar real quick. What day is it going to be released on? The 26th, the day after Christmas. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so next week uh, we'll be releasing kind of our annual recap video of all the projects that we put together over the year. Mm -hmm. um, that's a fun one. It's in the edit bay right now. Some Almost really fun done ones. with that one. Really fun ones. Fun so it was good to look ever. back at what has been accomplished every year. Yeah, a lot of amazing um, products released this year. Platform products, Circuit Python. Cool. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's shop talk. Looking at the notes here, looks like we have a an adaptathon hosted by Bill Binko. Uh, that was a several several weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Oh, we got some yeah. old notes here. Yeah, these are not. Um, yeah, we don't have shop talk. We have uh, community makes. So oh let's yeah, just jump into let's that. Jump into that. So every week, every Tuesday, we three D print some stuff from the community. This week we have a TIE Fighter inspired um, Hanukkah themed TIE Fighter. This is pretty neat. Definitely got to be one of the among one of the coolest Let's Hanukkah see, themed. Pull it up here. It's playing in the background. Prints there, so. that I've seen and quite a while. There this is. is from the uh, Bender's big movie of Futurama. Was there one of their? Score, yeah. Or, yeah, Bender's big score. Barely remember that one. It was during one of the rapping scenes in <laughs> in the mm, movie. Yeah, I don't remember the movie, but hey, that's where it's from. Yeah, you Very can look it up on idea. YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. We got it here. So uh, this is a painted it. Pedro, you painted it. We found it. Mm -hmm. Thought it was a really fun, neat idea. And uh, shout out to uh, Tangoji, who uh, put this up on uh, Thingiverse. A couple of different versions if you want to make it easier to paint. He has it in pieces, or you can, of course, dual extrude it. Which one did you do? The one that you have to, uh, like, completely put together. It's, like, chopped in half. Yeah. Got that it. one right there. Okay. And you put the wings on. Mm hmm Yeah, here's a quick video of it. I'll have to mute it somewhere around here. There it is. Anytime. What is he, a zombie or something? Very bizarre. This is a really cool way of uh, the theming else. of it. I really yeah. liked. Super cool. Bender's big score, so check out the YouTube link in the description. Mm -hmm. and if you want to make your own, please do. You can. It's on Thingiverse. We have linked. Tenjo. I think this is his first design. In two designs. Anyway, very cool. So shout out to you, sir. Very fun. Festive. I'd show it off, but a uh, good thing we showed it last week. We. We sent the it. other one into the office, <laughs> but this is what it looks like. Yeah, in Super easy print, it's just 150 microns, and of course, um, just fine tip brushes and acrylic paint mm. for getting all the detail okay. in there. Really good job of printing these out. The yeah. design for them. It's a huge brim. That's, uh, that's helpful, right? Oh, uh, it was just for the, the, um, the menorah. Okay. Oh, the menorah, yeah. yeah I didn't know how to. see being problematic yeah. on the bed. Printed on the Prusa yeah. printer, mm -hmm. um, regular PLA. Super fun little project to do for uh, <laughs> it's such holidays. A fun idea. Pretty cool. Excellent. All right, we got some more cool stuff from you guys. Uh, we got some makes. So let's take a look at the, this week's community makes. These are folks that post makes on Thingiverse. First one is a really cool thermo camera print. Yeah, this is one of this year's projects. It uses the uh, oh gosh, the Grid Eye eighty eight fifty five, I believe. A uh, sensor, uh, the Pi TFT, not Pi TFT, the Feather TFT, uh, the 3.5 inch, or is it, no, 2.4 inch TFT. Man, I'm rusty. And uh, it makes this really cool thermal imaging camera. Here's all the parts to it. You build your own, there's a learn guide, and um, it looks cool. Very, very cool. This is Pocket Pie Girl, Pocket Pie Girl, posted by GPS It Man, G Spit Man, maybe, uh, using the uh, Pi 3A, the new one. Very, very cool. It's got four buttons and tons of external buttons up here. So you can play all your ROMs. That's really good. Very cool. Another one, this is the animated LED sand toy, collaboration with Phil B, who wrote the code. 
This is a physics sand toy. It looks like there's little grains of sand in this lovely Charlie Plexed LED matrix. This looks good. Yeah, these are, uh, and it's got the LIS 3DH for the accelerometer. Favorite. And uh, the M0 feather project. Here's another one. This is the Charles M4. This is a case. It's kind of the, the bumper that we did, but adapted to be a case. What? Like the Leave It Snap Fits Super and things. Super cool. It's very cool. It's a good idea. Check it out. PH High on uh, Thingiverse posted this. Thank you, sir, for posting it. Also posted a make of the Trellis Bumper in Ninja Flex, I believe, or it's a PLA version. So there you go. Got another one. This is the Circuit Playground Yo-Yo that we did uh, last, last year. Uh, very cool. It's a Yo-Yo for Circuit Playground Express. Very, very sweet. Pie Girl, this person here, uh, Q4TP on Thingiverse, posted three Pie Girl 2s. Very excellent. And they're for Christmas. Look at that. That's one awesome project to make a pie girl. Those are all the projects I have this week. We thank everybody for posting their makes. And if you'd like to post your own, uh, you can do so by uh, tagging going it on in to the, the made tag or just tweeting at us. Mm -hmm. See those up, blog yeah. them up. I like the Twitters too. So there you go. That's this week's community makes. Super Excellent. Cool. All right. Don't forget, this week's coupon code, today's coupon code, rather, is Grinch. Got anything you want to get before time runs out? Grinch is the coupon code. Let's see. That's pretty much it for Pretty this good. week's show. Yay. Super quick. Yeah, that was it. We did the time lapse. That's a little jam-packed for that. Cool. I think before we go, we got one last fail of the week. Yeah, yeah. Or we next do. week's uh, little time lapse. Wanna run it? Yeah, I'm gonna run it. It is no. a star. Ba, ba, ba. What I like about these is that here? the uh, support material just it wasn't set to a high enough density. Mm. Just printed these two little towers, and of course it caught itself. Yeah, it way it through. <laughs> we just let it go through. We could cancel it, but it's like, well, but then now we cancel the time lapse. Yeah. We're still using our time lapse setup using the DSLR and the magnetic switch. Mm -hmm. um, that is working works excellent. Well. Octo lapse is the plug in mm -hmm. from Octo Print. Uh, yeah, this is what we're going to keep trying to do. More of these type of time lapses where the printer head is, moves out of the way. Yeah, another uh, thing to point out here is. Uh, the, the structural integrity of some of the prints aren't always as well when you do the octolapse just because the uh, print head is moving out of the way and allowing right. like layers to cool down and coming back over. That's right. It might depend on the geometry. This seems pretty tough. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as we play with it more, we'll let you know what mm -hmm. uh, we find out. Then over the holiday break, hopefully I have some time to finally break out the box for the uh, multi material. A uh, little kit for the Prusa. That's right. We'll so take we'll a have look it at in that. Box. That's right. We will try to set it up. Lots of cool stuff coming up for next year. Sweet. All right. Well, that is going to be it for us. We'll be here next week. But tonight we have more show. Tonight is Wednesday at 7:30 p.m. is as uh, seen on Show and Tell. It's the Show and Tell show, so you get a chance to show off your projects, what you're working on, um, with Lamar and Phil, and a lot of people from the community. Definitely stop by, hang out in the Discord. We'll give out the link as soon as that goes live so you can join us. That's right. Immediately following that at 8 p.m. is a whole hour of Lamar and Phil on Ask an Engineer. Mm -hmm. Cover all the cool topics going on in the maker community, new products, and of course, all of the upcoming things that are being worked on. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Yep, and then tomorrow is John Park's workshop every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Get some Make Code Minutes some live building and more. I think the unboxing of it box 10 is uh, coming up. So be mm -hmm. on the lookout for that one. Lots of cool projects is gonna be going over and of course doing the unboxing itself. There you go. So subscribe for that one. That's right. We thank you guys so much for supporting the whole team. Mm -hmm. If you buy a kit every now and then, you can support her, but is it filled with the thing in his hand? Look at that. Is that an iPad? It's the, uh, it's That's the a camera rig. rig. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I miss his glasses, the 
what is it, the publisher glasses? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he needs more publisher glasses. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. We will be in the Discord chat room. Don't mm -hmm. forget, we're there all the time. And don't forget, the coupon code is Grinch. Another one coming tonight as well, if you miss your chance on this one. But uh, hey, whatever, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, now we're just people chatting, chatting up. That, uh, it's not really a break if you enjoy what you do. You know what? That is absolutely true. Yeah. Even when we're on break, we're planning mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to be doing or filming something. You said it. <laughs> that was cool. Well, thank you guys so much again. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, remember to make a great day. Thanks for joining everybody. See you next week. Bye bye. Play the song out here. Mm -hmm.